All right, metalheads, this is DJ Rem, and I have Jim from The Dogs Divine. I'm going to start off by saying you guys, I've just been sitting here listening to you guys for like the last half hour, and you guys rock. Oh, thanks, man. So uh, so what's going on with you guys right now? Um, well, we just um, finished a bunch of shows. Um, we just actually did a couple of acoustic shows with Zach from Shinedown. Nice. Um, which is kind of different for us. We're not really in an acoustic band. Um, but um, so really right now, I think we're going to take a little break to, you know, get through the holidays and uh, we're going to try to find a tour that we can jump on and, um, you know, just get out in front of as many people as we can. Excellent. Okay, I, before I get too far into this, I want to thank, uh, obviously I want to thank you for taking the time to call, and I also want to thank uh, Clawhammer for hooking us up. So, Oop. I hear a car door. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm actually, I got called in. <laughs> we got some rental property, and, you know, I got like a phone call at 8 o'clock this morning. I had to get up and go to work, so, uh, you know, man. living the rock and roll dream, you know, <laughs> doing plumbing at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know many rockers that don't have to work too. So yeah, yeah. Anymore, you know, it's a part-time job at best. So. Okay, so since I just have you on the line, can you go ahead and just mention the other members in the band and what their spots are? Yeah, um, my brother Tom uh, is a singer, and then we got a dude out of New York named uh, Carl Van Heilman. He plays guitar, and um, Jeremiah Ross is uh, our drummer. All right, thank you. Where, where are you guys out of right now? Uh, Springfield, Illinois. Okay. Based out of Central Illinois. Okay, I'm I'm not too far. I'm in I'm in uh, Southwest Michigan. So. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, we used to be kind of from Chicago. Um, you know, when we first started out, we had a few members up in Chicago, and we used to practice up there and stuff. But um, you know, here in the last couple of years, we've had a few member changes, and me and Tom's been like, you know, the kind of the only original members. So. Um, we're kind of based out of Springfield now, but, you know, it's always been an Illinois band type of thing. Right. Okay, so how often with the current band and the current members and everything, how often are you guys able to get together and practice? I mean, when you're not doing shows constantly. Um, well, uh, never. <laughs> right. We, usually how we do it is, um, you know, well, I mean, here lately we've been playing so much that, you know, we don't need to rehearse or anything, but... Um, like how when we were writing the stuff, uh, there was a lot of stuff like we re- we record ideas, and you know we you know email them or like me and Carl and Tom would do like a Skype phone call type thing, um, and then you know when we started you know after we got the album done, um, there was a lot of arranging and kind of you know fine tuning in the studio, and then once we got to where we we're playing some more shows, we just kind of get together a day beforehand, um, like you know, at my house or something like that, and we just kind of go through the set, you know, for a day or two, and then we'd go out and do some shows. But, um, you know, I mean, really, once you, you know, I mean, we're all good enough to, you know, once you do that a few times, you don't really need to rehearse too much, you know. Right. Before shows, so. Very good. So, um, what, uh, how, how'd the band start in the, in the, in the original? Let me, re, let me back up. How long has the band been together, to, you know, count going all the way back to the beginning of the band, and then what was the, you know, what got you guys going in the first place? Um, we got together in 2007. Um, and like I said, we were kind of based out of Chicago. We had a few members up there, and our tour manager lived up there. Um, it was just. It was actually uh, my brother and our, one of the original guitar players, which was from, he was from Springfield, too. Um, it was just, you know, they kind of got together and was writing some songs and stuff, and, you know, they were looking to form a band, and, um, you know, since we were brothers, I was the first bass player, they called. Um, and we we wrote, um, and we had some demos, and we actually, um, we gave those, you know, we kind of sent some demos out and shopped it a little bit and um like the first night the first gig we ever played you know as a band we got a phone call that night and got offered a, a record deal um how cool is that <laughs> you know i was like yeah i was just like damn this is easy you know right <laughs> um which man was i wrong um but uh so yeah we just started you know playing as, i mean we were road dogs when we first started we do you know we play anywhere and we we had this like big uh, white cargo van and with a mattress in the back, and you know we just 
you know, booked as many shows as we could, and, and uh, I don't know, I just got a, a real throat neck sound, but we really got in with a lot of bands like Jelly Guns and Faster Puss Cat, and, you know, we did shows with Great White and Rat, and went on tour with Faster Puss Cat and L.A. Guns for a month, and, you know, played Canada, East Coast, all the way out to Hollywood, and, um, you know, and it, it was, it was you know, being in a band is like a relationship, a marriage, you know, it's right. that don't that don't work out and you gotta get a divorce. Um and, you know, I mean it gets tough. There's not a lot of money in it and, you know, you gotta keep your head about you and you gotta have a group mentality, you know, you you know, you're working with other dudes and you're sharing your life with them basically. So I mean it just, you know, we went through a few changes and um we pushed that album as much as we could. Um we had a song called Are You Ready that uh, we actually you know, got some, we did radio with that, and, and um, you know, it's just after a few years, we just, me and Tom, you know, we just kept writing the songs, and, you know, we decided, well, maybe it's time to put out another album, so, you know, it's kind of where we're at now. Good. So, do you and Tom pretty much do all the writing, then? What's that? Do, you, do the two of you do pretty much all the writing for your, for your music? Um, yeah, there's, um, like, there's a song called Dogs that Carl wrote, um, and then, I mean, there's a couple songs. I mean, there's a few that, like, I, you know, kind of wrote the whole thing. And then there's a couple, like, Hell Wouldn't Have Me, which, um, that was like, you know, there was a lot of songs me and Tom wrote when we were drunk, sitting at my kitchen table, <laughs> like, at two in the morning. That seems to be our kind of, you know, how we write. I don't know. Whatever works. <laughs> yeah. But, um, there was, uh, like, that song, we kind of wrote it. And, like I said, when we got in the studio, like, we reworked, um, like kind of the the rhythm section behind the solo and like Carl wrote that so there's you know there's stuff there's you know a few songs that were like that where it was basically ideas that me and Tom put together and you know Carl came in and as us three we kind of tweaked it um then there's songs like Brand New Addiction like where I kind of wrote the whole all the music to that so um and there's a few songs that are you know they're kind of throwbacks from uh like One for the Ages was one that almost made the first album but didn't you know? It was we ran out of time and money, so it, it's just been kind of sitting around for the last few years. All right, cool. Speaking of recording, where did you guys record this current album at? Uh, we went to Ardent Studios uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, and we actually got they got like a room that they custom did for ZZ Top, and we got to record in that room mostly. Nice. And Jason Latshaw was the uh, the producer on it. All right, cool. What the one thing I like about you guys so much is you guys have. You guys have a sound that's pretty unique. There isn't very many bands out there that sound like you, so that's definitely was a draw for me when I heard you guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, me and Carl were just talking about. It. I was like, I don't know if it's good or bad. I mean, it's us. I don't want to sound like everybody else, but as far as you know, I don't know if it's working for us or against us right now. But you know, we'll see. But I mean, we are who we are. You know. So. Well, nobody's gonna say, "Hey, those guys sound like." Oh God. I was going to say Nickelback. Nickelback. Nobody's going to ever yeah, say that. Everybody says, yeah, yeah. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of, we definitely don't sound like Nickelback. I yeah, can't stand that crap. <laughs> um, okay, the cover of the album is really unique and really cool, too. Who designed that? Um, Stefan Jensen out of Chicago, F3 Studios. That's cool. I really dig on, it seems like, uh, I always say this in every interview, but I don't care. I'll keep saying it. Seems like we went through music went through a phase where everybody wanted to just put their picture on, picture of the band on the cover and, and not actually have any kind of design to it. You know what I mean? Right, right. And it seems like bands are going back to art, more art, and you know, for you know, I may not buy a lot of albums, but I still download a lot of albums off Amazon and stuff. And it's but it's nice to get the the the, the artwork with it to look at. You know? Right, right. Yeah, we um. I mean, it was cool the way we because we named the album "Size of the Fight" from the right. you know the Mark Twain saying you know it's not the size of the dog in the fight but the size of the fight in the dog just because we've been through so much crap you know yeah <laughs> it's like we've been in a fight for the last four years just to try to keep a band together so um, yeah I mean you know we just kind of went to step and it was like you know we want something mean and you know we're all pissed off and you know that kind of thing and, you know. We wanted to kind of incorporate a dog into it, you know, because of the name. So that's what 
we came up with, so we were real happy with it. It's along those same lines. How did you guys come up with the name, the Dogs Divine? How'd you guys name the band that? Yeah, that is, you know, it's because we always get asked that, and like nobody in the band ever came up with that name. It was actually, um, it was one of those things like where one of the dudes in the first band had some artwork. You know, from like he was gonna have this other band and they never did anything. And when we got together, he was like, "Well, I got all this artwork." You know, so we're like, "All right, cool." You know, we'll just... <laughs> right. And, and it was actually one of those decisions that was made like even before like I was asked, you know, to join the band because I was kind of one of the last dudes that you know completed the lineup. So I mean, basically, it's just because you know it was just easier. <laughs> cool. <Thanks. laughs> so I don't know if there's really any real meaning behind the original thing was like hey I got these you know this backdrop and stuff so you know it already says the dog's divine so we'll use it okay. that's cool I always I always get some unique stories so I appreciate that right. so what um what were your what are what are your your musical influences what what bands did you grow up listening to what bands are the ones that you're like man this is why I want to rock um man I got really lucky when I was a little kid, um, we had a cousin that worked for my mom and dad, and, like, he'd come spend summers and stuff, um, and he just, like, left his record collection with me when I was, I mean, I was, like, in third grade, something like that, and he had tons of, like, Old Journey and, um, um, like, Aerosmith, um, Queen, Night at the Opera, I grew up, I mean, I've, I've bought that album, I don't know how many times, I just wore it out, and we actually did a song off of that album on, a, on the album, but, um, you know, and then when I got older, of course, I was, you know, growing up, I listened to Crew when I was a kid, and, and um, you know, I got into all the L.A. bands, like Faster Pussycat and L.A. Guns. I was a huge, you know, into thrash, like Anthrax was, you know, I just thought they were gods at one time. My life revolved around, like, Megadeth and Anthrax and all that, so. Um, Motorhead, I've always been a big Motorhead fan. Um, you know, I mean, pretty much the gamut. I was never, like, I just, you know... I never liked just one kind of rock or, you know, metal or anything. I just pretty much listened to everything, you know, growing up. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I feel sorry for people that get stuck in one type of music and don't ever experience others. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it was just all, you know, rock to me, really. You know, right. I didn't care if it yep. was, you know, Motley Crue or Megadeth or what it was. You know, I just I kind of liked it all. So. Um, and then I played, my dad played guitar, so... We grew up with a lot of country music. I played um, I played bluegrass. I played stand up bass in a bluegrass band for a long time. Um, and, you know, went to the jazz camp, and you know, went to like Eastern University during the summers when I was a kid, and would study jazz and played in jazz band in high school. And, and so, I mean, you know, I was just always into all kinds of different stuff. So. That's neat. What would I? So, what would I find you listening to right now these days? Um, really, lately I've been listening to a lot of Lead Belly and Skip James, um, some Blind Boy Fuller, like a lot of 1930s, 1920s, Delta Blues. 1930s. Oh, wow. Cool. So, um, yeah, um, as far as a more modern guy, I've been kind of checking out Eric Sardinus a lot, but, um, I've been really into his kind of, you know, ragtime blues and, and, and stuff like that. That's neat. I've really, I found myself recently really listening, to, trying to... Cause there's a lot that I haven't listened to, a lot of Deep Purple. That's kind of been my thing lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, um, matter of fact, we were just, um, I was checking out um, that Rainbow concert with Richie Blackmore, and um, Bob Days was like one of my all-time favorite bass players when he played, and a Dio was singing, so, I mean, that's just one of the best rock lineups ever. Yeah, can't go wrong with Rainbow. Okay, where can people buy this new album at? Um, right now, I mean, it's, I mean, we got distribution through stores and stuff, but I mean, nobody's carrying CDs anymore, <laughs> so, um, you know, you can get it at Amazon, um, uh, eBay, um, you can contact the band, um, and of course you can download it, like, you know, iTunes and, you know, Rhapsody and all those kind of places, so, um, just all, you know, the usual suspects. Very good, very good. Is there anything else that you want to uh, tell everybody that's going to listen to this about you guys, why they should listen to you? Um, I, I mean, 
I don't know. I think we're. I think we got an honest sound, real. You know, um, I, just you know. I mean, I, I. I think we got that element of what rock used to be when it was. You know, when everybody was kind of into it, more supportive of it, and everybody was going to concerts, and you know, um, I think you know that's missing today from a lot of bands and, you know, just a lot of what's going on with the, in the music industry. So, you know, I think we're a rock band for for, for real rock fans. So. Very cool. Very relax when you're not when you're not doing all these shows and everything. I mean, what's how, how do you fill your downtime to recharge, I guess? Um, well, usually I work. <laughs> to try to save up enough money so I can afford it for rock and roll. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of a history buff myself. So, I mean, you know, I like to read a lot and, and that type of thing. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. Um, the 18th century stuff, and I, I like a lot of French philosophers like Rousseau and Voltaire and stuff like that. So I kind of get into that kind of stuff. So I'm talking um, to a cultured rocker. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually I did that... Um, I used to work for a production company. That worked for we did a lot of documentaries for the History Channel and stuff. I was a researcher for them. So, oh, cool. Um, yeah, it's been kind of a passion of mine as well for for a while. Okay, one more thing about when you guys are playing shows and stuff. Do you have a favorite song? Is there is there like that one track above all the others that just the crowd goes crazy and just pump gets you pumped? Um, so far, I, you know, I don't know if we have like a crowd favorite. Um, I mean, the first two, we always start out with the first two songs off the album. We do Dogs and Overnight Sensation right together. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, those are pretty, you know, rocking tunes. Um, but those are always fun to play. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, we still do Are You Ready off the first album. People seem to really like that a lot. Um, it just kind of depends. I mean, we've, um, like the FDLF has been kind of a, you know, the crowd usually gets into that. So um, we play ugly off the first album. That seems to always go over. So I don't, I don't know if I really got, you know, a favorite yet. You know, right? Um, so. that, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Here's one for you. What's the craziest thing that's happened, to you guys, at a show? <laughs> the craziest thing at a show. Um. Gee, well, we had a stripper jump on stage with us one time in Florida, and we had to, I mean, actually kick this chick off the stage. <laughs> um, she, I mean, you know, it was one of those girls that, that drank a little too much. Right. You know, that type of thing. Um, and, you know, it was, like, rubbing all over everybody and, like, dancing around. And, um, so, you know, past that, I don't know as far as, I mean, we've had fights break out while we were playing and, you know that kind of stuff but uh, nothing that's just really over the top so far thank god you know <laughs> do you think uh i think it'd be possible for me to get some tracks off that old album sent to me yeah yeah i could do that um i think you got my email right what's what's that do you have my email um i'm not sure you know claw hammer i think i think so because claw hammer had you copied in i think Right, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll see if I got it, but yeah, I can get you some tracks off of that. So, that'd be cool. I'd appreciate that. And just so you know, too, um, this uh, this interview is going to replay on my show this coming Tuesday at 10 p.m. Okay. Eastern time. And after I play the interview back, I will play the whole album back as well. So, okay, cool. And after just sitting here listening to half of it, I, you know, I mean, I've listened to some tracks already, but... I was just I sat here and was just listening track to track to track in a row and the, the further I got into it the more pumped I was getting to talk to you so All right, cool. So I, I think the dig the, the the listeners are gonna dig uh getting to hear the album, so I look forward to it. Alright, cool. Yeah, we've been getting um fairly good reviews, you know. I mean we've had a few that, you know, didn't like it, but I mean that's always to be expected, you know. Yeah. Well the thing is and that this is the nice this is the nice relationship that I have with Clawhammer is they usually don't they only send me music they know I'm going to like they we right. they you know they ha, they have a good feel for what I like and don't like and they don't even send me stuff that they know I'm not going to like so it, it works out very well right cool but okay well hey you know what that's all I have if 
Well, only other thing that I'd like to ask is if you can make a couple uh, radio station tags for me, and then uh, I'll let you go. All right, man. Cool. So if you can ha- make one that says, this is Jim from The Dog's Divine, and you're listening to DJ Rem at MetalheadRadio.com. Okay. Just any time? Yep. Go ahead. Hey, this is Jim from The Dog's Divine. You're listening to DJ Rem at MetalHead.com. Okay, we have to redo it. It's Metalhead Radio. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I wonder if I should write that down. It's a, did I do it right besides Metalhead Radio? Yeah, yep. All right, let me write that down. Just in case I need to cheat. It's all good. I need every, every single interview I do, there's always a blooper of the of a station tag, so. Right. All right, anytime? Yep. Hey, this is James from the Dogs Divine, and you're listening to DJ Rim at MetalheadRadio.com. Very cool, man. That was perfect. And then if you can make one more, say say all the same stuff, but just leave the DJ Rem part out. We'll just make a generic station tag. Okay. Hey, this is Jim from the Dogs Divine, and you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com. All right. Cool, man. I'll send that one to all the other DJs so they can play it before they play your tune. So. All right. Cool. Okay, well, thanks again for taking the time to call me, and I hope the rest of your weekend goes well, man. All right, you too, bro. All right, take care. All right, see you. Bye.